Hey friends, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Gibbon. I'm the content executive here at Higher Things. And joining me again today is my friend, the apologist, David Zills. How you doing, my friend? I am doing okay. Um, I'm hanging on. On Monday morning, I was like, is it Saturday? So that's how my week's going so far, but I'm here. It's it's Tuesday as we record this. And so we've got a we've got a path ahead of us, but we're gonna make it. Um <laughs> We're going to make it. I, I have hope. Um, so we're going to tackle a doozy today. Uh, we, we are going to actually start talking about modern day miracles. And so to dive into a topic like this, I think just sort of we, we need to lay just a couple of pieces of groundwork before we go. First and, and foremost, we're not saying that these modern day miracles uh, prove our faith. Uh, our, our faith is rests on Christ who is risen from the grave um, and this, the veracity of the Holy Scriptures. But if the scriptures are true and God is the same yesterday, yesterday, today, and, and forever, it shouldn't be surprising to find miracles either. We're, we're not saying that there aren't, there, there are not miracles. What we're, we are saying is we don't measure our faith by them, but we're, we're overjoyed to find them actually happening and scientifically verifiable as well. Is that kind of getting after it there? I think so. Yeah. The scientific part is interesting because there is one research who has taken that approach. Um, but yeah, I think I would turn what you said a little bit um, upside down too, and say that um, when it, you know, we say our faith rests on the Bible, but then, you know, we can say, well, how, why do I believe the Bible, you know, and there's kind of the two camps. There's the, well, I believe this because I've always believed this. And so my default is belief. And then there's the, I'm skeptical of this because I grew up in a society that was skeptical of this. So my default is skepticism. Um, and so is it possible to look at the Bible from a neutral ground saying, we're not going to assume it's true. We're not going to assume it's false. We're just going to assess it the way we would any historical book. Um, but it's hard to do that because um, maybe because of our culture, um, it just kind of goes back. There's like this instinct that if we're going to put the Bible alongside other historical books, well, the Bible is a special kind of book. So we should be extra suspicious about it because it makes some really big claims and we can't just take it at face value. Um, and so last time we talked a bit about burden of proof and it's kind of how much evidence do you need to say this is a reliable source? And a lot of times it feels like there should be a much higher burden of proof. We need a lot more evidence to establish the Bible. We can't just treat it the way we, we would, you know, Tacitus or Josephus or something like that. And, you know, I think to some extent that's reasonable because it does make some big claims and we shouldn't just, you know, go, if someone says, I am sent from God, follow me, I will save you. You know, anyone can claim that. So we want, we, we do want to approach it with um, critical thinking. That's very important. Um, we don't want to be gullible. Um, but on the other hand, how high does that burden of proof have to be? And I think one of the areas where um, there's this sense of, well, knee-jerk reaction skepticism is with the miracles because we say there's all this supernatural stuff in the Bible. And, you know, a lot of us don't feel like we live in a supernatural world. And so it's like we're we're kind of, we're in a mythological realm here, like Lord of the Rings, it sometimes feels like. So, you know, there's this idea of these miracles make it hard to believe this thing, even if we just treat it, you know, from a neutral perspective. But where the where modern miracles could come in is if these things are happening today, maybe it shows that the world of the Bible isn't that different from the world of today. So maybe it brings that burden of proof lower and maybe we can approach the Bible from a somewhat neutral perspective, still engaging our brains with critical thinking so we're not gullible. Great. So when we're talking about critical thinking and then the unexplainable, how do these two things sort of meet in the middle? Because this is sort of when we grab hold of a miracle, this, this is something that we would recognize that this is sort of God uh, interacting with his creation in a way that, that we would not have predicted in a way that seems to defy the, the normal way that things tend to work down here. Yeah. So um, this is the way um, Candy Gunther Brown wrote a book, Testing Prayer, which is a provocative title where she basically attempts to take scientific tools from, you know, different kinds of sciences. And the way she approaches it is we can observe and measure and verify the effects, the empirical effects. We can say this is the before, this is the after, and we can say this is someone's personal account of the thing that changed the before to the after. 
um, when it gets into the supernatural cause, that's not something we can probe with science, but we can say there's a before and there's an after, and that doesn't happen on its own. Good. So that's that's sort of the, the, the fair approach then, because I, I mean, when we start to get into this, a lot of the things that are claimed to be miracles are going to have a valid and, and a normal explanation. Um, and, and, but every once in a while, there's just going to be something that that you can use all of the right uh, research tools, but you're not going to come up with a good explanation for. Yeah, so that's really what it comes down to is did something happen is are the before and after actually real? And then second of all, is there a natural explanation? or not and then third of all if there's no natural explanation is there some context that gives a clue that there might be a supernatural agent at work and so you know if something just weird happens like you pull out a cheetos and it happens to look like the virgin mary you know i mean the famous or, or it looks like jesus you know jesus the the famous jesus um you, you see jesus in a cheeto you know that's um first of all that could happen by chance and your eye can see whatever it wants it's like you're looking at the clouds looking for shape um but sec so there's a natural explanation but second of all there's like no context for why Jesus would manifest himself in a Cheeto. You know, it doesn't make sense. So there has to be a context where a supernatural cause makes sense, such as prayer or, you know, missionaries bringing a message somewhere and God saying, hey, pay attention. Um, and that is where we see these things happening. It's not in a bag of Cheetos, thankfully. That's that's good. Um, because like, I, I think it would, if Jesus was a Cheeto, it would probably be a sin to eat him. And I don't think I could, I don't think I could resist. That's that's a good point. Okay, now I'm distracted. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. So miracles that that seem to defy a uh, reasonable explanation. You said there there are actually documented cases, right? Yeah. So last time I showed this two volume work, which is really intimidating, by Craig Keener, came out in like 2011, where he documents a lot of eyewitness cases and cases from history. Um, and it's honestly kind of a beast. So I was glad when I think last year, 2021, maybe it was 2020, sometime during COVID, he had a project and it was to write this at more of a popular level, um, not like cutting corners academically, but like, is it something that you could actually pick up and read for yourself and not just use as a reference? Um, and so that book is called Miracles Today. Um, by Craig Keener. Um, I think it's uh, might be Baker House Academic 2020, 2021, something like that. Um, but he goes through and he talks about kind of the, the philosophy of miracles. He talks about a lot of modern day accounts and he's careful to bring up, you know, what about doctor's testimony? What about medical documentation? Do we have, you know, external corroboration that these things happen? You know, so it's, he, and some, some of the cases are stronger than others, but most of the ones he shares, or at least a lot of them are pretty compelling, at least to me, um, you know, that there's something that happened um, and that it was something unusual. Um, and then he gets into some of the, the kind of the, the hard issues about what about when God doesn't heal why why does he only heal some people that doesn't that seems arbitrary and he gets into some of those you know tougher issues that if we can accept this how do we make sense of it when you know it doesn't seem to happen all the time so very excellent book and in there in the middle he has a section where he talks about um the quote when jesus talks to john the baptist and he's and or john the baptist sends messengers because john is in prison and he says you know are you actually the messiah because like i'm in prison and i don't see this playing out the way i expected and jesus quotes prophecy from the old testament saying you know go tell john what you see that as the prophet foretold the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. And so he lists off four different categories of miracles that are things that don't happen, even very typically today by modern standards. Um, and he says these are fulfillment of prophecy that show that there's God is doing something new. Um, and so Craig Keener then goes through and he has chapters on each of these categories and he shows this is still happening today in credible cases. So I've got some accounts I can share. I have to look at my notes because I don't want to mess up the details of these, but we can talk about blindness, um, leprosy. There's actually an account that's not leprosy, but it's about tissue growing back, um, which, you know, there's always that question of do things grow back 
you know, and we have a case, you know, there are cases where that can happen. Um, so yeah, I can share some of those. Absolutely. Um, let's, let's dive into that because I, I think a, a lot of it is sort of, you hear about the other side of it. I'll hear about, you know, the faith healer uh, who goes through town in a revival tent and, you know, cures somebody's arthritis because, you know, just the, the uh, enthusiasm of the moment has them not thinking about the pain, but a week later, a week later, they, they feel bad again. That's something I really want to emphasize is that um, you can kind of, again, it, it take, it's critical thinking often avoids extremes. You can go and say, all these accounts are valid because they make me feel good about my faith, but that's not critical thinking. Yeah. But the reverse where you say there are some bad cases that are clearly fraud or misunderstanding or could have a better explanation, therefore all of them are bogus, that's not okay. critical thinking either. So kind of treating each one on a case by case basis, which is kind of what we, the conclusion we came to two episodes ago, which is case by case, you got to look at the specific evidence for that case. Um, Cause yeah, there are plenty of cases that are not credible, but that doesn't mean that there aren't ones that are. Right. All right. So give it to us. Okay. So yeah, I, that, I mean, there are a ton in, in this book, um, but uh, I'll just, I, there are some that I pulled out that I thought were interesting. So Heidi and Roland Baker, there's been a lot, they're, they're missionaries in I think Mozambique, and they seem to have a particular gift of the spirit for, um, of the Holy Spirit, God's spirit for deafness and blindness. Um, again, two of those things that are associated with Jesus in the Gospels. Um, and so there, there have been cases where witnesses report cataracts vanishing. So where, where your eye is glossed over and you can't see, but the you, visibly you actually see the, the anatomy of the eye change and heal in front of you. Um, so there's a case where um, Heidi Baker, um, one of the two missionaries of the husband and wife team, talked about a girl named Albertina in a certain village. And she was about 20 months old. So infant and her eyes were completely white from the cataracts and in front of both local villagers and foreign visitors her eyes turned from white to gray and finally to beautiful dark brown we sobbed as we watched her actually see her mother and for the first time she wrote she writes um, or she said in an interview um, and then there's actually a, another guy who worked with their ministry and wrote his dissertation about it so i mean there's actually there's a lot of academic literature that talks about this specific couple's ministry i mean and he says i've seen blind eyes open he he wrote in an s he writes in an essay i was two feet from a blind man and watched his milky pupils change to a solid color and he could suddenly see clearly um, so this is relying on eyewitness testimony. We don't have necessarily doctor's um, testimony for these cases, but how, uh, Roland and Heidi Baker, uh, we'll get to this later, um, Candy Gunther Brown actually was the one, the one who wrote Testing Prayer did measure some of their prayer scientifically to see if it had effects. So we can get to that later. Um, but yeah, so those are some cases, you know, where there's blindness. But then we ask, you know, what about medical documentation, doctors, um, medical journals? And there's a case like that. So um, actually lots of cases like that. So um, there was a woman who um, had um, juvenile macular degeneration. So it's, it's not medically curable even today. And so she was completely blind. She couldn't see anything. Um, and one day she and her husband in 1972 were praying um, before going to bed and that the, they weren't really the, the circle of Christians they were in wasn't one that was like quick to jump to miracles. They weren't Pentecostal. They were Baptist. Um, but the husband felt led by the Holy Spirit to pray. And so he touched his wife and said, oh, God, you can restore eyesight tonight, Lord. I know you can do it and I pray you will do it. And immediately when the wife opened her eyes, she could see for the first time in nearly 13 years. Um, so, you know, this is, you know, anyone can say this, but they have before and after um, documentation because this is this is actually a story in a medical journal. So this isn't like some somebody going on, you know. Oprah and and be, uh, yeah, Oprah and saying, hey, I was miraculously healed. Like there, there are doctors that have taken this case seriously. Um, 
yeah, I mean, she was she was going to the school for the blind, reading Braille, walked with a white cane. She'd never seen her husband or daughter's face. But that night, in a moment, she could see what her husband and daughter looked like. Yeah, this is, um, if it defies explanation outside of, of the, the faith, we're, we're allowed to recognize then what if God actually still does healing? Now, this is, this is sort of, again, to, to serve the gospel. Um, so we belong to an organization called Higher Things. Uh, you're, you're listening to a Higher Things podcast, and that actually comes from, uh, from 1 Corinthians at the very end of chapter 12. Um, and uh, it, it says, do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you still a more excellent way. It, it, it doesn't mean that, that um, all possess gifts of healing, but it also doesn't mean none do. But what we are to, to desire are the higher things, the things that this points to, that Christ who is crucified conquered sin and all of its effects, including the, the wages of sin, which is death, including the blindness, including this, this, the sufferings under, under the pangs of evil in this world, that, that we see him undo some of these things in this world. Thanks be to God for that. Um, our hope, though, isn't simply that this, this woman who is blind can now see and now she has to make her own way, but, but that she would continue in faith all the way to salvation, that, that the church would be served by this. Yeah, I think that's worth an episode unto itself because there's kind of like, what's the point of these miracles? Because everybody who's healed in these miracles eventually dies. So they're not, you know, we live in a, we live in a world that's broken. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as soon as you realize that things are not the way they should be, you're progressive and you're religious at the same time, because the starting point of all progressivism and all religion is something's not right. Um, and so Christianity is one of many answers to the to that issue and where do miracles fit in and the, the point is miracles are not god's sol permanent solution they're they point to it um, and jesus resurrection is the only miracle that's irreversible as a down payment for the final irreversible um reversal of the of the brokenness at the end of time but these miracles are are they're they're signs they're pointing to it they're not the solution and you know there's a lot that could be said about that but um but still they do they are signs they're meant to get our attention they're meant to point us to something and to say hmm is there something that i might be missing right and it's uh, in a lot of cases too simply a recognition that god still has compassion on this world absolutely um, absolutely does it not simply according to the, I want this, or, or I think that I need this, but this will be a thing that strengthens and keeps you in faith. And sometimes even, even when he says, no, it's still out of compassion. It's out of compassion that, that he does the things that we don't like that would also still keep us in faith. And those things are knit together in ways that are in a lot of times more complicated than we get a chance to understand, but it's worth sort of diving in a little deeper, maybe even uh, later on down the road of why sometimes people don't get their miracle yet. This side of yeah, theory. that's a huge question. And, you know, I, I think anyone who's like paying attention is probably thinking it at some point in this discussion. So I don't want to get into that now. I want to stay focused on, you know, modern miracle accounts. Um, but uh, how about this? Let's go on to cerebral palsy, a case of lameness, again, from Craig Keener's book. Um, so her name was Marlon. Um, and this, she, she, uh, she had, this, this is this is kind of the description of how bad it was. She lost her eyesight. She became effectively paralyzed from the neck down. Some of her muscle spasms were so severe that her seizures had broken the bones of those trying to take care of her. So this is like a really bad case. She lost control of most of her body, um, although she could retain some control of her eyes and mouth. She was always shaking. Her, her head was off to one side. She was drooling. And at some point they were like, okay, well, they got her to the Mayo Clinic up in Rochester, Minnesota. Um, very reputable place for modern medicine. Um, but the Mayo Clinic was like, we can't really do anything for you. And so they put her into a, um, like a total care facility and she was only 19. Uh, this is very sad. And so Marlon, for the first time at this point, when she's like, we can't do anything for you, Marlon finally gets angry with God. Um, and the interesting thing is she didn't feel his anger in return, but her heavenly father's comfort. It's amazing how God can put up with our negative emotions. I think sometimes as Christians, we're afraid of negative emotions because we think they're sinful, but in a lot of cases, they're just 
normal responses to life and it's what we do with them that makes them good or bad, but God, God can handle it. And the interesting thing is God showed her a vision. We'll get more about visions and dreams, but God showed her a vision of being held of a church and of a specific date, March 29th. Fast forward, she's in church on March 29th, and the purpose of the gathering was for prayer. Um, and the pastor says, I've never prayed for someone like this before. Okay, so that's really encouraging. Thanks. Um, but <laughs> but uh, they, they prayed, you know, and, and then afterward, the pastor said, do you want to try to walk? So she does. And her heat if it hit the floor. Fe- uh, sorry, tongue twister. Her feet hit the floor flat. And for the first time, she could feel the floor under her shoes. She took a few steps. And then finally people let go of her and her feet were pointed inward, but over time began to straighten. Um, Every lap she took around the inside of the church, she grew stronger. Um, She again heard her heavenly father, this time telling her to take off her glasses. And she found that she could see. um, And her her vision was actually soon certified as better than 2020. Um, And again, you know, medical validation, she went back to the Mayo Clinic and they were like, like actually actually the nurse that saw her walking in dropped the telephone um, he he was holding. Um, So they they ran all the tests and yeah, no one expected this, but, but everyone was obviously pleased. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's stunning. And and I mean, to, to recognize too, that this isn't again, something that simply happens in a a revival tent, but you you can go to the doctor before and you can go to the doctor after and, and document the medical records that, that something was different before and, and after, like, like you said. Right. Right. Um, Here's another one. um, Last one from Craig Keener. Um, But uh, another medically documented case, and it's actually a case of an organ, a complex organ growing back. Um, So there's a diesel mechanic named Bruce, and he's working late under a car or a truck, something like, yeah, I think a truck, and the jack gave way, and a 50,000, is it 50,000 pound um, axle, you know, axle crushes his abdomen almost down to the concrete, and blood shot up into his throat, and he actually soon reports seeing angels holding his body together. Um, the first responders believed that he was dead for about 40 minutes, um, and he should have bled to death in 10 minutes. Um, so the fact that he actually survived this is they actually studied, they did a, they looked in the literature and that they never found anyone surviving this, but like surviving is obviously not helpful if your intestines are broken, which is what was happening. Um, so um, they ended up, a lot of his intestines were dead from this and they had to remove them. And so his small intestine had 121 centimeters, whereas on average, it should be about 600. And then there's a special part of the small intestine, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, the ileum. It's supposed to be 350 centimeters, but he only had 25 left. Um, And so he couldn't digest his food and uh, just started losing a ton of weight and just not doing well because of this accident and the surgery that removed the dead parts of his intestine. Um, But then one of his friends felt led by God to fly from New York to pray for him. And in person, the friend commanded the small intestine to grow in Jesus name. That's kind of bold. And Bruce felt something like an electric jolt in his body. And it turns out that in an adult, a small intestine can widen, but it can't get longer. But the radiologist um, confirms that his small intestine had more than doubled in length and was now fully functional. So that's a before and after that you don't have an explanation for. And there's medical before and after to go with it. Um, Yeah, so this is under leprosy. It's not really leprosy, but, you know, it's tissue that's damaged that is restored. Um, Yeah, I mean, I... God be praised. I, I don't, I don't have anything to say that nuts. Um, yeah. That one caught my attention. Like when, when a truck falls on you, I was like, Whoa, this is a bad day. But yeah. um, so there is a case that I, I always like to mention because it's kind of close to me. The, there was uh, I went to Taylor university, which is a interdenominational Christian college in Indiana. And there was something that happened while I was there. I didn't actually find out about it till I was in grad school, but it turns out one of the girl, the girl who prayed for healing actually sat next to me in speech class. Um, you know, one of the 
general general ed things um, my my first semester at Taylor. Um, and so there was a girl named Joy who had vertical, uh, let me check, I think it's vertical heterophoria. So basically the, the eyes, like there's something messed up with one of the eyes so that they take pictures from different angles and it causes migraines and double vision. Mm -hmm. um, and so she has, um, and this is from Craig Keener reports it, Candy Gunther Brown reports it. And I actually, from the professor that was involved, have some right. of the journal entries that they typed up and shared for others that these that these women wrote who were involved. But um, but yeah, she she had a prescription for special glasses to fix this her eyesight, and she had a doctor's note saying if she has bad migraines, she can miss class. Um, and then one evening she was in kind of a prayer gathering and they started praying for healing. And like I said, the girl who was doing the praying sat next to me um, in speech class. And um, there's a song going on that the worship team is playing, which is Marvelous Light. And Joy, the person with this um, condition, feels like God is telling her, that she gets to live in the light, which she can't do when she has a migraine because it it, right, it right. causes bad pain. Um, and so and she also reports feeling half her skull being pulled upward, um, but what she says kind of makes sense since part of her problem was that her head was slightly, slightly lopsided. Mm -hmm. um, and then she felt that God said to her, why are you wearing those glasses? You don't need them anymore. Um, and so she takes off her glasses. She asks to borrow Heather's, the, the girl who is praying, her Bible, and she can read, which is weird because normally without glasses, the lines skip all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, and again, Candy Gunther Brown shows pictures of the medical documentation showing the before and after. And um, basically, um, yeah, the, 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 the doctors couldn't explain it. Wow. That's yeah. Thanks be to God. I, I, I mean, at, at the end of this, I think this is sort of the response of, of Christians, even sort of the ones who are a little more skeptical of this, that what, what if the God who had mercy in the testaments that we cling to so dearly still has mercy? Uh, what if Christ is, is risen and it has an effect on the world? Um, it's not just one day when you don't need God anymore, then you finally get to go and be with him. But that even down here today in this valley of the shadow of death, you can still find traces of, of, of compassion. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's a huge topic unto itself that, hmm. you know, we, our hope isn't for the life after death, but we actually can experience eternal life, you know, in a relationship with God now. And, you know, this is just one way that he might um, choose to touch us. But um, yeah, so you want to get into science or how are we doing on time? Uh, we, we, we got a lot of time already we used. How about uh, we come back around to it next time? That sounds good. Awesome. David, thank you so much for joining us today. That was awesome. Right. Sounds good. Yeah. I mean, like I said, um, there's more where this came from Craig Keener's miracles today. Um, and then Candy Gunther Brown, more academic testing prayer. And then next time we can talk a bit about Lee Strobel who interviewed Craig Keener, um, Candy Gunther Brown and a few others in a book called the case for miracles, which is probably the most entry level. So, um, yeah, this, this isn't supposed to be the be all end all discussion there's you know obviously a lot of research and discussion that can be done to follow it up and there probably should be considering the claims yeah 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 definitely do your homework awesome all right well thanks so much for joining us have a good one all right you too